Hello, Ragers. I hope that you're all doing well. Now, when a multi-million dollar corporation is posting less frequently and pulling fewer views than a jobless basement dwelling neat, this prompts one to start wondering where it all went wrong. Obviously, High Snobiety has done well over the years, considering it was able to scale itself from a simple blog to a renowned digital media empire, but why does it just not hit the same anymore? The majority of you watching are probably younger than High Snob itself, which has led me to ponder if they have failed to captivate this new generation, or if their fall from grace has come as a result of the endless spew of pointless, meaningless, content dump garbage, clickbait, attention-seeking bait posts on their Instagram. Either way, I have got to get to the bottom of this. Let's first take a trip back to where it all began. Taking a look back at the OG Heist and Mighty blogspots about page, let's read what David Fisher, the founder of this venture, had to say. Welcome to Heist Nobiety. The idea of creating Heist Nobiety came up in March 2005. An economics student, who never really knew why he was doing economics, finally started working on his real interests and for that needed a creative platform. Heist Nobiety was created. Heist Nobody tries on one side to be a filler for news and trends in the urban streetwear segment. Other than that, Heist Nobody also creates its own content by having special features on outstanding people, stores, or products. Find fresh news on a daily basis on designer toys, sneaker, fashion, design in general, and other topics that interest high stability. As someone who took a first year economics course in university, I get it. Shit is so boring it leads you to do some crazy things. I had to create streetwear wojacks to cope with the pain. So David and I are honestly like two peas in a pod. Getting back to it, David would use High Snob to highlight and document all things street culture related, from the latest sneaker drops, the hottest brands, upcoming designers, and more. Looking through the web archive of the site brings you back to a much simpler time. Although I was too young to appreciate the early days of Web 2.0 and forums like Super Future, it's very reminiscent of when the internet was much more canny to the Wild West as opposed to now feeling very corporate and routine. High Snob continued to grow and transitioned to a new site, highsnobiety.com, in April of 2006. Although snapshots of the site during this time period are few and far between. High Snob began publishing a print magazine in 2010, which has continued to come out biannually till this day. From opening his first office in Berlin and growing from a team of seven in 2012 to boasting over 70 employees in 2017, it became very clear that High Snob was no longer a small streetwear blog, but now a multifaceted, full on lifestyle publication that was gaining recognition around the world. David was honored by the Business of Fashion's 500 in 2017 as well, with the site doing a biography on his life and his accomplishments with High Snobiety, stating, With around 500 million social media impressions and 9 million unique visitors a month, High Snobiety produces daily curated content on music, the arts, fashion, and culture. The High Snobiety team also curates shopping tool What Drops Now, and in 2016, Fisher launched creative production agency High Snobiety Plus, all of which fall under the group Title Media. In January 2018, the previously self-funded publication raised an $8.5 million Series A round led by London-based venture from Felix Capital. High Smitey has collaborated with a variety of designers and brands, hosted a plethora of events, opened stores, debuted their own products, and continued to branch out and evolve throughout the years. In 2022, this all culminated in a majority stake of High Snob being purchased by Zalando, a massive German-based fashion and technology company, for quite a bit of money. This came as no surprise, as High Snob had turned a profit of around 60 million US in 2021, and Zalando was, a was attracted by the editorial appeal, as well as their ability to turn stories into products and products into stories. I love commodification. Although David retained a minority stake in the company, and it has been stated that High Snobiety will act as a strategic and creative consultant to the German e-commerce giant, and also retain its editorial independence, with creative agency work remaining fully autonomous and management structure unchanged, you can't help but feel as if something has been off for the past few years. Which is why we're here today, to theorycraft and figure out what has been going on. Some fashion enthusiasts have theories, which I'll add on to this in a second, but in short, one FA poster highlights the phenomenon of how some obvious bait product will release. High Snob and other platforms report on it. It does numbers on social media. People argue and say it's dumb, yet influencers still buy into it. The product sells out and the cycle repeats. This has led me to developing the patented FHTV High Snob cycle. Essentially, this is how it goes. High Snob's engagement is down and their social media manager is sweating. They've already posted seven times about whatever mischief is doing in the past two days, so they're desperate for ideas. Next, by some miracle, another bullshit-ass product is released and there is some drama that they can farm. This is followed by their writing staff plugging the news into ChatGPT and asking it to create the worst possible take for them to post in order to maximize engagement and use their loyal audience to farm impressions. 
This results in their hive mind botnet of sleeper cell agents to activate and swarm the post, leading to a crazy increase in attention. As a consequence of this, this attention results in the prices of whatever thing they were shilling to skyrocket, with wannabe influencers and culture vultures desperate for a chance at fame. If they buy this one product, this will surely be their way to get noticed, since it's the new hot thing that everyone is talking about. Four months later, when people finally get their hands on the product, and when the general public is beyond sick of it, High Snob reports on this hot new trend, which leads to the engagement going down again, since everyone is tired of hearing about the same thing now. Obviously this is a given, considering the culture of clickbait clothing and whatever we've been facing in fashion for a while, and although I've specifically been talking about High Snob, this phenomenon isn't exclusive to them. It's something that every online digital lifestyle magazine will have to face. Lifestyle is such a broad term, there are of course many aspects to it, and when you have an audience in the millions, chances are they're going to have quite a few differing interests, which is why you see such a high disparity between engagement on High Snobiety's posts. Someone interested in watches may not give a fuck about AI-generated Baby Yoda. Also, what is it with these digital media companies having such a pathetic presence on Twitter? Not just High Snob, but like pretty much every other digital magazine. It's funny how they brag about their ability to craft stories and push products and engage audiences, yet I can tweet that I'm spending another Friday with my wank bud in his goon cave and get a hundred times more impressions. Just seems so out of touch. Like, are you really crafting brilliant narratives that inspire stories behind meaningful products if no one is around to read them? They also just seemingly let just about anyone become a contributor now. There's just so much variety that I think they've lost track of who their target audience even is anymore. Same with their YouTube, since there's just one main high variety channel, there are just so many random things put together, which is why you'll see a video with over a million views next to one with 6k. It's so simple, like it should be clear that this hurts the growth of a given channel a lot, and creating different channels for different topics would make a great improvement, but what do I know? Moving on, High Snobiety has roots heavily in streetwear and street culture, which is why those posts always do well on Instagram. Even though a lot has changed over time, whenever they claim Supreme is dead or whatever else, the OGs come out of the woodwork to join in on the conversation, which leads in turn to the ultimate struggle that one faces when trying to grow a community online within a given niche. It is understanding that growth comes at a cost. You have to find a way to stay true to those who are with you since day one, while also expanding, if that's your goal of course, which it clearly is for High Snobiety, considering they went from a simple blog to a multi-million dollar venture. But you know what they say, you don't get to 60 Instagram followers without making a few enemies. I highly doubt that when David started High Snob back in 2005 that he would ever expect it to go this far. I find this story to be very interesting, which just goes to show how far you can take an idea that you believe in, turn it into a business and expanding into new ventures and securing a fat bag, but at what cost? Although the business of High Snobiety has grown exponentially and been successful throughout the years, it's clear that the community has suffered as a result. Commodifying the countercultural roots of streetwear and using it to start a multi-million dollar business will always be so ironic to me, but you do you. Maybe I'll change my mind once the FHTV empire expands and I can extort you all for money. But seeing a humble blog change so much and become this massive empire, obviously there's going to be a huge disconnect there now. A loss of identity, if you will. Similar to how whenever online personalities achieve a certain level of success, people start claiming how much they've changed and whatever. I don't want to say High Snobiety has fallen off, but a lot has obviously changed, as I've shown throughout going over their history. But yeah, all in all, that's it. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'm not alone in feeling this way. If you bought into my theory, please comment about how awesome and smart I am. And thank you again for watching. Later, Ragers.